Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is BC. Welcome back to another episode of Supreme Being. We're back. Uh, I know it's been about a week since I posted, right? I had a long weekend. A lot of people come in from out of town. We just wrapped up the Team BC Mastermind, right? Which is something I do twice a year with my team every single year. Uh, we get together, everybody nationwide. You know, we plan, we strategize, we do a bunch of other bonuses and that's a continuous evolvement too of that. So um, I know everybody on the team is happy of the changes that we made. Shout out to the team. If you guys are interested and you're in the real estate world, join teambc.com. Join teambc.com. If you are interested in learning more about eXp Realty, the company that I'm with, we're brokered by eXp Realty. Go to partnerwithteambc.com. Otherwise, you can shoot me a DM on social media as well. Lastly, Modern Success, my family, every single member of Team BC is on Modern Success and that is a requirement. You join by going to briancasella.com along with all my other products. So let's begin. I want to talk sales today, sales, because as I look at my life, right, I want to give you some perspective and I want to discuss the importance of this because I know many of you who listen to me as I look at the audience and the breakdown, um, you don't really fall into one category per se. When my you know, journey started online and doing social media, the vast majority, virtually 100% of my following was all real estate agents. And now it's very diverse. You know, I've really expanded my content over the last, you know, decade, pretty much after my third or fourth year, I started really dabbling in other things and learning and studying and mastering other subjects that aren't directly real estate. So what I wanted to do uh, today was kind of take a step back, discuss sales a little bit with you, give you some pointers, give you some perspective, and hopefully you can uh, run with it. And if you're somebody who isn't an individual who looks at, you know, persuasion, influence, seduction, and all that stuff, right? And you're not holding it in a high regard. Hopefully this episode will get you to bump it up your list a little bit as a priority because you can see the, the benefits of it. Okay. So let's get right into it. Now, I just moved to uh, Miami, right? Everybody who, who follows me knows that I moved to Miami in May permanently, right? And when I moved here, nothing was set up already, right? I, I really was at a point where I wanted to get the hell out of California for many reasons, right? COVID and everything that happened was just kind of the nail in the coffin, but I'd already been planning it before then. And a lot of people think I just moved because of politics and that kind of stuff. Look, I, I really could give a shit about politics. I don't care, right? Um, I was looking at quality of life. I was looking at taxes, right? Running my own business. And for me, staying in California just didn't make sense. Uh, there were so many other places I got to travel to over the last couple of years that I really enjoyed. And I moved to California. So you're sitting there wondering, well, BC, what's your point about sales and communication and all this stuff and persuasion? If you're talking about moving, well, think about this, right? Look at me moving across the country. I want you listening right now, especially if you haven't done it. Some of you have done it who listen. I'm sure you have, right? But go back to those beginning moments right before you did it, right after you did it. I still have only been here six months, okay, just to give you perspective. But think about that for a second. All right. Now I'm going to only zoom in on the communication standpoint for somebody to move cross country. One of the main reasons they wouldn't or would be hesitant is the social aspect. Okay. Most people aren't in a position to create relationships, create new connections, move somewhere where they're alone and feel totally comfortable. Even if they're more of like a, what we would consider what society deems like an introvert or somebody who's more to themselves. Maybe they only play video games, right? Maybe they keep to themselves. Even if you're that, Moving somewhere where you don't know anybody for a lot of people is at the epitome of, whoa, I don't want to do that or uncomfort, discomfort, right? So one advantage that I can give you that I'll break down is that wasn't even on my radar. Can you imagine what that would be like if that wasn't even on your radar? Okay, think about that for a second. Not even in meeting new people, whether that's men, women, business, right? That shit wasn't even on my radar. Why? I can go out my door walk down the street, strike up a conversation with anybody and create an instant connection, create a friendship if I want, promote my business. And most people, of course, not all, but most people are going to be receptive to me because I understand communication, but primarily because I got into sales, which opened the door to studying and learning communication. Okay. So go back to the person or the version of me, maybe, you know, 10, 15 years ago, who was an adept like I am now. Now, imagine you want to move, you have the desire, and on paper, it makes sense, and you really want to, but you'll hesitate to make this move that I did, or even consider it because of the social aspect. You see, the common denominator and, and that underlying kind of um, line and thing, and a lot of what we do is the social aspect, whether it's our reputation, whether it's our social skills, our status, 
you know, our ability to have friends and connections around us, right? That's important, right? Even if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of friends, that's important to you. So the fact that you would move and have to, in quotes, start over, and that would weigh on you so much internally and emotionally, you wouldn't make the move. You wouldn't make the best move that, again, you're deeming is the best move for yourself because you're afraid. Because you know deep down inside you don't have the skills or the, or the proficiency in order to create those relationships and start new friendships. Now, I've been out here doing a bunch of other things and juggling a million things. So I haven't even gone out there like that where I'm like, yo, I'm going on the hunt. I'm going to meet everybody. And I've still met a ton of people. And the people that I do meet, I have great connections with. I have yet to meet somebody here that isn't messaging me or following me and engaging with me, meaning the connections that we're making are meaningful. It's not like I'm just talking to people, hey, hello, and then they forget about me forever, right? And again, to some people listening, you're not used to somebody speaking with this kind of confidence on this subject. Well, it's because it's true. I'm not talking out of my ass, right? I'm only speaking what's true. This isn't delusion. This isn't me making shit up. It is what it is. Now, am I going to take it to the next level soon? Absolutely. Absolutely. But remember, I came over here with nothing and I had to set everything up and I had plenty of setbacks, which maybe I'll discuss in another episode that pushed a lot of things behind. But we're discussing the social aspect of it, the communication, the sales, because that's selling. Yo, know, when I meet somebody, I'm selling them on giving me a minute of their time or 30 seconds of their time or 10 seconds of their time. I'm selling them on why they should keep a connection with me and stay in touch with me. I'm selling them on why they should consider me for my business and my ideas and my you know, offers, whether it's products, services, or whatever. I'm selling all the time, and so are you, right? And we forget that because we don't look at it from that perspective. Everything is a sale, dude. You want to get somebody's attention, you're knocking on a door, or you're calling, right? You're listening to this podcast, you're selling. You are selling. You're selling. You have to sell them on a reason to stay on the phone with you or to stay and keep you at their doorstep and not shoo you away or close the door and tell you to go to hell, right? We forget that because we don't think about it again from this perspective many times. So I move across the country, restarting my business is not a problem. Growing my team is not a problem, right? Establishing new friendships and connections is not a problem. I got plenty of people here that I can rely on already. And, and just so you have retrospect, think about back home where you are right now, if you were to uproot and leave, Think about having people close to you that you can trust that would maybe house sit for you, take care of a pet or an animal if you're out of town. That level of like, okay, I know somebody. Within six months of being here, I already have a handful of people I could do that with, excluding people who follow me on social media. I have some people who don't even use social media who, who I engage with that I would trust to come here and watch my stuff. Now, that's not to say that I'm 100%, like they might not screw me over, right? But to the degree that I know enough about them already, that I would trust them to do that. And I know they, they, they wouldn't hesitate to say no. Now think about that for a second. Maybe the only people in your life that would do that for you are family. At what capacity can you go out and create a new connection that would lead to that? And how quickly? Could you do it in a couple months? And again, I'm not even focusing on it right now because I have so many other things that I'm doing. I could probably do that within a couple of weeks of being here, for sure, if I really wanted to. And I think I already found somebody, somebody that lived in my building at that Airbnb that I was staying at. Shout out to Chantel, right? She could have done it. She lived right. Um, I was in uh, unit two. She was in unit 16. Can you do that? Now think about that, right? We take that for granted or we, we are so detached from that and what I just said, we don't understand. So that inability to do it or discomfort with that category would stop you from potentially considering a job transfer to make more money in a new city or something like that, right? Isn't that crazy? Even if your deepest desire is telling you to go there, you would hesitate or think twice about it, or at least the very least be totally terrified because of the social aspect, right? And I say sales because that's a, a buzzword, right? When I say communication, sometimes it doesn't ring like sales does, right? How about yourself, the conversations with yourself? Many times until you're really at a higher level mentally. And even then, you still have to sell yourself on a lot of stuff. You have to sell yourself on getting out of bed on time. Sell yourself on the temporary pain and present pain you have to endure to get to the other side of something, right? Let's say you guys are building a business and you have to put in that you know, 8, 10, 12 hours every day now to then have the team later be the CEO and have the freedom that you want, leveraging, scaling, so on and so forth, right? You build the depth in the company and all that. Well, in the beginning, it's not like that. You're the CEO all the way to the janitor and you have to sell yourself on that vision 
and keep it bright and clear and vivid for yourself so that you continue to work and show up every single day. Do you not? You have to sell yourself on losing the weight, making lifestyle changes. You know how difficult it was for me to stop eating meat? If we're going to talk about this for a second, I had to sell myself. It tasted so good, right? It does have its benefits, right? There's a positive and negative to everything, right? And I ultimately looking at it that way is why I decided to cut out meat and, you know, uh, fish and chicken and, you know, dairy and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into the details on that, but I had to sell myself on that because in the temporary, was it difficult? Hell yeah. You have like an addiction to it. You have fooled yourself into thinking that, oh, I need this. Oh, without it, I'm going to die. I'm going to get sick, right? You have all these things and, and, and information packed in your head that, again, would stop you from doing it. I had to sell myself to handle those internal objections and obstacles that I had. Literally sell myself at the highest levels. Not just at the logical level, but at the deep-rooted emotional and neurological level. I had to sell myself in order to break free from those patterns enough to create a new habit. So that's like the ultimate sale when you do it with yourself. That's why I tell people everything starts and ends with you. If you can master that sale with you and change and move and grow and evolve as you please, any outside sale pales in comparison. And it always will because you versus you will always be the most challenging and difficult battle. It's going to be like that until the end of time, right? Unless we become robots, which it kind of sounds like we're going to be like right now, right? The robots, the metaverse. I mean, it's just insane where we're going right now. So think about that for a second, right? That, that's the toughest sale. Maybe for some of you, you have your own story, whether it's a weight loss thing, change in career, you know, where you finally had to make that decision to pull the plug and go all in, right? Many of you have a ton of cool stories and interesting stories. We've seen, right, and watched a ton of interesting stories. So it's not like there's lack of examples or other people who haven't done it. They have. We just never thought about it this way. I have to sell myself on this stuff. I have to sell myself why staying in and not going to the club and getting wasted is better for me and how that is much better for me than getting clout on Instagram or Facebook or social credit, right? That's bad social credit. I don't want that because those are the wrong circles to be around. I want credit from the other circles that are higher, le you know, higher level that have different priorities. The circles that, that, that admire your ambition and your success and your ideas, not how many likes you get on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, right? That is a sale, switching those priorities, because that's even more deeply rooted because it goes to the emotional level. It goes to conditioning, right? It goes to conscious and subconscious patterns and habits and beliefs. They go all the way down to our values and beliefs and identity, which we know is the core. People mess with actions, right? And thoughts at the top when it's really about, you know, identity at the very bottom and then values and beliefs right above it. Sell yourself on how to break free from that identity. Sell yourself on challenging your beliefs and your values and upgrading them and making them better, right? Now, the better you are at that, which again, you can learn this. It's, there's a technical aspect and a mindset as aspect. Do both, work on both. You will improve, no doubt in my mind. And I mean, the evidence is out there with me and plenty of other people that you will improve. Then, Grabbing the script and selling somebody else is easy. Me convincing somebody else to do something that I know is the best thing for them is extremely easy for me now. Why? Because I've done that very thing with myself over and over and over and over and over. So what's the difference? What separates the top person from the other person is the confidence, the conviction, and it's that umph. It's that X factor. It's that question mark that people can't seem to get why this guy is such a good salesman and the other one isn't when they're both good at the script. Well, what is it? That's that hidden something that people can just feel that hits them like a ton of bricks. This is why I know I can sit in front of any client who's motivated. And I tell you with 100% certainty and confidence, they're mine. Let me get in front of them. I got them. I will not let them get away. Now, do I get 100%? No, but that's still my conviction. And I will get the vast majority of them, virtually all of them. But that sale that I'm making to them, that same scenario I've made to myself, hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of times. This isn't the first time that I'm selling. But if you try to run and only handle the outside and you never handle the internal part with the sales process, you're going to fail. Or at the very least, you're going to have very limited results and you will lack longevity. The selling of yourself to improve, to get better, to study, right? To gather your own experience and refine your technique and everything through your experience and your beliefs and your values and your identity, right? That's what allows you the longevity. That's what earns you 
that strength of character and growth and evolution to keep going because the average person has those surface level questions because they never improve. So that same version of themselves is being presented with continuously increasing difficulty of life and challenge. The more you want to do, the more you want to accomplish, the better you want to become, that difficulty meter goes up. And if you're not improving, then you run into the obstacles that the everyday individual asks about that are very kindergarten, preschool questions. How do you stay motivated? How do you get started? That's all the beginning, man. How do you deal with emotions? Again, that may seem advanced to some of you, but that's still the very beginning. You have to improve. Then you're presented with the same or more difficult circumstances. And guess what? You handle them differently, right? You're coming from a different perspective. Your, your, your thoughts are different. Your actions are different. Your character is improved right? You have less kinks in your armor versus the person in the beginning. And we all have to grow that way and build our armor, right? It's almost like you're gathering points and depositing money in the bank. But you got to sell, man. You got to sell and you have to sell at the highest level, starting with you, but then to the outside as well. Very easy for me to sell people. I mean, you look at my team. How is my team with primarily newer agents trumping the statistics? I have plenty of new agents first, second year doing you know, 15, 20, 30 transactions, easy, their first year, getting 7% commission on listings when everyone in the market is barely scraping by getting three or 4% or two. How is it that we're doing that? When we're using the same systems and scripts as everybody else, was well, because I'm, I'm building leaders. I'm building the individual. I'm teaching them not only how to sell to the outside, but to sell to themselves to get better. And the people who stick with us will continue to ascend that ladder. There's no doubt. Because the people who are more proximity to me, my coaching clients, you know, my, my, my students, my, my, my team members, my personal family and friends, my close ones, that's just, just going to ooze off on them because they're closer. And the closer you are, the more you get. Proximity. You guys know about that. It's an old teaching. Get around people who are hustling and maybe at the level that you want to be at. The proximity, right? Other hustlers. It's an old saying. It's nothing new. But guess what? Being around me and watching me handle life and how I not only sell myself, but sell other people would teach you at a much higher level. Because now you're seeing it and you're experiencing it in person or on video right then and there. It's different, much different, much different. And just reading it from a book and then trying it yourself. Yeah, that's one level of it. And that's for sure a step that you have to take. But you know, what would you pay to see the best salesman on the planet, whoever that would be, be around them for an hour and be able to ask them questions and learn from them for an hour. What, what would that be worth to you? Right. And to everybody, it's going to be different to some people that say, fuck that. I don't care. And other people, oh, I pay a million dollars. I would get loans or whatever it took. Right. That's what we're talking about here. That's how important this needs to be to you. So if it's priority number 10 right now, at least bump it up to top five because man, Going back to what I said in the beginning, me being here, it's great. It's awesome to know that I can go anywhere and make connections with anybody I want. I can choose to be quiet and mind my own business, or I can choose to talk up and work the whole room and get to know everybody if I want. I've done both. But do you, can you honestly look at yourself in the mirror and say you have that option? If you don't have the ability to do both, you can't sit here and make an argument that one is better than the other if you're not in a position of choice. Just like the people who have never had money, don't have money claim to you that, oh, money's this. It's like, I tell them, how can you be in that position to say that if you've never had money? You don't know what it's like to have money to then make an honest assessment to say, I've had money. I haven't had money. So my conclusion is blank. But let me tell you, you want a higher level human experience. You want more fulfillment. You want more self-esteem, more confidence in yourself. You want better results. You want the ability to do what you want, go where you want to go without fear or hesitation. You got to get the sales and communication thing down, man. And not that you have to be a grand master. Just be good. Just be proficient. At least aim for proficiency in this thing, man. Aim for proficiency. Then you can take it wherever you want to go, right? Even if you're somebody who wants to live in a cave, if you build this and you're only by yourself, at least your communication with you and yourself will be heightened and enhanced. No doubt, no doubt. And that can't be denied. From there, you'll open up a door that I've been speaking from, the perspective that then when you do, you'll say, ah, that's what BC is talking about. Because the majority of what I teach, like I've been saying a lot, will be for the doers, the people who want to do and perform and engage 
the challenges head on because then all the stuff that I've been saying over the years, when you engage with a challenge, you'll say, oh, he was right. Oh, he was right. Because I'm speaking from that perspective. I'm speaking from that perspective. I'm speaking from that, that experiential, experiential, you know, knowledge perspective. I took this knowledge, I applied it. This is my results. I took this knowledge and applied it. This is my results. This was my own thought and experiment. Then I applied it. This is my results. And I can tell you, man, I've come across a lot of stuff, but this is it. Whether you want better personal relationships, intimate relationships, right? Friends, romance, whatever it is, this communication thing is huge. And I'll leave you with this. One of the best things you can do and biggest gifts you can give to somebody else that this art form will teach you is making someone else feel amazing. It's cool to know that I can meet with somebody or bump into them who's maybe not even in a good mood and leave them laughing and feeling good. Is there anything cooler than that, really? Because at that point, when they're feeling good, nothing else matters, does it? They could be in the worst position of their life, have just gotten the worst news, but you gave them a little bit of spark, a little bit of life. And to me, that's one of the biggest gifts you can give, not only yourself, but to other people. And the fact that you would be in a position to be able to do that on command, I think is priceless. And I personally would recommend, but I personally, well, to you, right? But personally for myself, man, that to me is priceless. That to me is priceless. And I didn't even know that existed or what it would even be like before I could do that. And let me tell you, it's the greatest gift you can give. Okay, so with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We'll end it here. Those of you interested in learning more about my stuff, go to briancasella.com. You have my products there and my coaching, Modern Success, which soon will have a name change. I'm just letting you know. If you want to talk more about my brokerage, where I work, EXP Realty, and you're in the real estate world, I love EXP and recommend it to everybody. Go to partnerwithteambc.com. And lastly, if you're a realtor listening to this and you're interested in joining my nationwide team, which is in 14 states at the moment, looking to expand to all 50 in the continental United States, go to join Team BC. Com. All right, that's it for this one, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.